weight of all that slag broke through as lava came tumbling down out of the doghouse door like a tidal wave of hellfire. Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. In the spring of 2017, Antonio Navarrete was on top of the world. Just a year earlier, the 21-year-old Florida resident had met the love of his life, a young woman named Daisy Martinez. And now, Daisy was pregnant, and so she and Antonio hey. were very excited about starting a family together. For the time being, Antonio and Daisy were living with Antonio's parents in his hometown of Waimama, which is a quiet rural suburb just south of Tampa. Mm -hmm. But Antonio had a bright future ahead of him. Ever since he had graduated high school, he knew what he wanted to do with his life. He wanted to be an auto mechanic, and he had the skills to do hey, it. Man. From the time he was a toddler, he had always been obsessed with cars, breaking apart his toy cars and putting them back together. And then as he hey, got a little bit older, nice. he began drawing these very intricate drawings of cars mm -hmm. that he loved or designs for new cars. Man and had then when talent. he was a teenager, okay, the he man began had actually talent. tinkering around with real cars until he finally acquired a car of his own. It was a white Chevy lowrider pickup truck that he tricked out with all mm -hmm. these fancy lights and special rims and this huge sound system that took up most of his back seat. It was thanks in part to this truck, which he nicknamed Casper, that Antonio, who was too shy to be much of a ladies man, met up with Daisy in the first place. Mm -hmm. Antonio had driven Casper to a local car meetup for other car enthusiasts where you could basically Oh, kind of like, you know, the Fast and Furious type of thing, you know, with Dominic Toretto and everything, yeah. Or enhance their vehicles. And so while Antonio was there, he was walking around when he saw on the far side of this meetup, there was this unbelievably beautiful young woman and he found himself just staring at her. He couldn't help it. And this young woman, who was Daisy, she eventually would look up and she would smile at him and the rest as they say was his it's his Six bro, later, i love this so much i love to say that antonio at his uh -huh. parents house and the couple had announced to their delighted families that they were going to have a baby Antonio got yet another good piece of news. He'd landed a good job with a company that did maintenance work for Tampa Electric Company's Big Bend Power Plant, All right. which is located in Apollo, Florida, which mm -hmm. is about 10 miles to the east of Antonio's parents' home. Now, this was not Antonio's dream job. He still very much wanted to eventually become an auto mechanic, but this job paid 12 bucks an hour, nearly double what he was used to making. And so with this job, he and Daisy would finally be able to raise enough money to get a place of their own, hopefully before the baby arrived that fall. Also, mm. Antonio had been told by other people who worked at this company that this was actually a really easy job, that pretty much you just rolled around on golf carts all day picking up trash. It was perfect. A few weeks later, on June 24th, Antonio found himself driving in his truck to the Big Bend power plant for his first day on the job. As he drove, he would have glanced over at the picture of Daisy he had taped to his dashboard. She was the only woman he had ever loved besides his mother. When Antonio arrived at the Big Bend power plant, he was totally amazed at just how enormous this thing was. It was basically this huge factory that sat right up against the water, and there were four huge smokestacks coming mm -hmm. out of the ceiling of this factory with white smoke billowing out of them. This plant produced electricity, and they did this by burning coal. This process was done in four distinct units that were inside of this factory that Antonio was looking at. And each of these units is comprised of a humongous boiler, which is basically a 12-story tall oven. And so coal is loaded into this huge boiler, and it burns at the bottom of the boiler, creating some steam. And that steam goes up the boiler and begins to turn these huge turbines creating the electricity and then the steam just continues up the boiler and then out its respective smokestack into the air. In newer units, the airborne ash, which is a natural byproduct of burning coal, is captured inside of the boiler. But at Big Bend, three of their four units were built in the 1970s, so they were older models, and they did not capture the airborne ash inside the boilers. Instead, the ash would get heated up so much 
that it would melt and turn into a substance called slag, which basically is molten lava, like the stuff that comes out of volcanoes. That's what slag is. And so as the slag kind of builds up inside of the boiler, it would go through this man-sized hole at the very bottom of the boiler. And right below that hole is this 30 foot tall water tank called a cooling tank. And this red hot slag, it basically dumps down into that water, which cools it off turning it into these kind of glassy rocks. And then they settle at the bottom of this 30 foot cooling tank. And at the bottom of the cooling tank is this grinding mechanism that pulls these hardened, cooled off little boulders of slag into it. And it crushes them up and spits them out on the other side as little tiny bits of slag chips. And then these chips get sold for use in everything from sandpaper to roofing shingles. So after Antonio had spent several minutes just admiring this gargantuan building he would be working in, he gathered up his things, he hopped out of his trunk, and he headed toward the front doors. That day and the next couple of days were very uneventful for Antonio. He basically just sat in a break room and watched videos about safety and training. And then when he wasn't doing that, he was out trying to navigate around the inside of this huge factory, which was basically this huge- Please make sure to hit the subscribe button so we can get to 1K. That would make me really happy, guys. Huge maze. And he found very quickly that it was a very hazardous place to work as there were- Yeah, I think that- around. This is the main reason why the pay was so good and it is a factory that basically if something goes wrong you die. I mean this isn't you know technology like you design like an app or something. This is the real thing. The way he explained the whole mechanism and how the slag actually goes through that water tank it sells at the bottom then you know it gets spit out by like another mechanism that you know we you have like chips or some of something that's like no honey that's just dangerous as hell wow. inside of it it was super loud and there was just heavy machinery oh, it, oh yeah loud i forgot running. about it but after several days of just kind of walking around and asking people what things were antonio felt like he had a pretty good handle on the layout and also on what his job would entail on thursday june 29th so just four days into doing this new job Antonio woke up in his parents' house in a really good mood because the next day, that Friday, Daisy was going in for an ultrasound and they were going to find out whether their baby was a boy mm -hmm. or a girl. And he was yeah. very excited about this. And so Antonio came downstairs, he grabbed a quick bite to eat, and then he kissed Daisy on the cheek and he headed outside into his truck and began the commute to work. A few hours later, Antonio's mother was in the grocery store when she pulled her phone out of her purse and she noticed Antonio had called her and she missed it, but he had left a voicemail. And so she played the voicemail and then put the phone to her ear. And what she heard was quite possibly the most traumatic thing a mother could ever hear from their child. After leaving the house that morning, Antonio drove all the way to work, no problem. He parked in the lot. He went inside the building and initially the day was like any other day. He just kind of drove around the facility and picked up trash and that was it. But just a couple of hours into his shift, two fairly significant issues arose simultaneously inside of unit two. In the boiler, the slag that was building up had somehow created a sort of plug over that man-sized hole where the slag was supposed to dump into the water chamber. And so as more and more slag was being created as the ash melted, it wasn't draining into that chamber. And so all of this slag was just building up on top of itself inside of the boiler. And then in the water chamber, completely unconnected from the issue in the boiler, the slag that had fallen into the water chamber that had cooled and settled at the bottom, it had landed in such a way that it actually blocked the grinding mechanism. And so none of the cooled slag boulders so and rocks nothing worked. were being ground up and expelled out the other side. And so they needed to fix these two issues quickly, otherwise unit two would become basically ineffective. Now, the safe way to fix these two blockages would be to start by turning off Unit 2's boiler. And then once it was off, you could drop dynamite into the boiler itself and break up the blockage over the man-sized hole. And All you right. could send a team into the water chamber after you drained it to chip away and move the blockage over the grinding mechanism. However, what did turning they? a boiler off at a power plant is extremely expensive. And so the Tampa electric... So we have to choose protecting people not have the money have the money and do whatever horrific thing it is
please don't tell me in the name of Jesus Christ that they did not, under no circumstance, drop a dynamite in that thing. The company decided, you know what, let's just have them fix these blockages without turning the boiler off. And so at four in the afternoon, a senior plant manager rounded up five other employees, which included Antonio, to come with him and do these repairs inside of Unit 2. And so the plan was to empty all the water from the cooling chamber of Unit 2, and then once it was empty, they would open something called the doghouse door, which is on the outside of the cooling chamber towards the bottom. They would open that up, giving them a line of sight into the bottom of this cooling chamber. Let's be honest, they will never pay you enough to risk your life for a job that they... You know what? I just think that if whoever owns this factory, do you want to not lose money, then you're going to have to get your A up of that chair. Come down and you're going to fix this because it isn't my money. I'm not going to lose millions. I get paid $12 per hour. You cannot make me. Do you want to fire me? Good, it is good to me. I'm gonna search out the job. Where that grinding mechanism was, where all those slag rocks had kind of come to a stop on top of it, and they would fire water cannons into the bottom of this cooling chamber to attempt to dislodge these slag rocks off of the grinding mechanism. And then after they cleared that blockage, they would shut the doghouse door and they would somehow deal with the blockage inside of the boiler. But that felt like a secondary issue. They needed to make sure the grinding mechanism was cleared before they did anything else. Now, you need to understand that this company had asked their employees to do this type of repair before, to do it with the boiler still on. And in the past, nothing bad had ever happened. And so these six because when you do something that you already know is bad it's like you put yourself i don't know your hand over the stove the first time you don't get burned the second time you don't get burned the third time you don't get burned you do know that one day when you do something that it is so incredibly stupid it is so incredibly unethic you will run out of luck guys including Antonio must have thought this was just totally routine that we would never be asked to do something like this if it was extremely hazardous but it would turn out what they were doing making these repairs with the boiler still on was quite possibly the most hazardous thing they and could I said it was fatal this plant but either way the six-man team made their way over to unit two and they began taking up positions with their water cannons right in front of the doghouse door. Antonio's job for this operation was actually not to be involved in getting the slag free. He was just gonna be there to clean up during and after the operation. And so he stood kind of in front of the doghouse door, but maybe 10 or 15 feet back, just kind of standing back, watching the other guys do their jobs. Now, you need to understand the scale of the machinery in front of Antonio and these other men. You have the water chamber. It was which is huge, all right. It was as huge as a huge king get. And then above the water chamber, I don't understand is the 12 story that... tall boiler that is still on. So there's coal actively burning inside of it. There's red hot slag, so like lava, just kind of tumbling around inside of it. And the steam inside of this boiler is well over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. And so they are dwarfed by this totally dangerous piece of machinery. But eventually, their operation begins. The senior plant manager has the water chamber drained, and then after it's empty, they open the doghouse door, and Antonio watched as the other five men took turns with their water cannons, firing them through the store at the big slag rocks that are sitting on top of the grinding mechanism. And it wasn't really working that well, but they were starting to make some progress. And Antonio likely was just kind of getting bored, waiting for this to be over, because there really wasn't much for him to do. There wasn't much cleanup. And then as he's standing there, something horrible happened. Because the boiler had been left on, all that ash was still getting melted and turned into slag. And the slag was not being drained because that plug had formed over the man's side. Please don't tell that it was coming boiler. like on so top. All the slag that's building up, building up, like it's getting a heavier and heavier and heavier. 
and about 20 minutes into their cleanup operation, the weight of all that slag broke through that plug, immediately creating an opening for all this red hot slag. This lava came tumbling down. It rebounded on the back end of the empty water tank and shot out of the doghouse door like a tidal wave of hellfire. And in seconds, thousands of gallons of this lava-like substance was all over all six men. It was like a wave going over them. And then after the slag hits the ground, they were all standing in six inches of basically lava that stretched in 40 feet in any direction. Now, unlike trying to run in, let's say, mud or deep water, where you're just kind of moving slowly, every step you take in this slag, basically your foot melts into the slag. So with every step, your shoe melts, then your skin melts, then your bones melt into this substance. And so all these men, after immediately being hit with this stuff and catching on fire, literally they likely tried to start running, but it was like their bodies were slowly consumed by this slag feet first. And so Antonio tried to run like the rest of them, but he couldn't go anywhere and he fell onto the slags. So he's laying on his side and as he's melting and burning to death, he reaches into his pants pocket with his free hand and he pulls his phone out and he calls his mother. She doesn't pick up, and so he leaves her a voicemail. And all he says is, Mom, Mom, I'm burning. Please call the cops. Please, Mom. And in the background of this voicemail, all you hear is the hissing sound of the steam and slag pouring out of the boiler. In total, five of the six men that were a part of this repair operation would be killed from this tidal wave of slag. Antonio would be one of them. Tampa Electric would end up paying out a settlement to each of the families of the deceased. This is way too much, you know what I mean? It is way too much because none of them deserve this fate. Just because a company wouldn't win millions of dollars. It's like, no. So if you have enjoyed my reaction, please give it a big thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe so you can be a part of our community. And I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.